Okay, hello and welcome back. Uh, as a quick FYI, I am... I had gotten over getting sick last week. And this is the third time I'm explaining it through my videos. Uh, essentially, one of my computers, the one I use for editing and recording my commentary, uh, as well as my only Mac OS, which I need to access the editing library. Hard drive failed. The hard drive failed. It was like six, seven years old, so it's not too surprising. I just didn't anticipate until it happened. But ultimately, between fixing that and getting access to everything that I need, I didn't lose anything, most anything, anything important, anything not replaceable, at least in regards to like the YouTube stuff and whatnot. But with that in mind, I have been pushed back. I mentioned it in the previous video's comments, but uh, essentially, I am in a state where I'm basically going to have to do just longer episodes for another week because of, you know, lost time and stuff like that. Okay. Now, let us continue. Okay. I suppose it's worth noting that I'm still getting over sick a little bit. Mainly just after effects on my throat and stuff. I probably cut it out, but I just, ooh, had a little bit... A significant cough. Let's go significant cough. Um, it should be fine. I can talk for an hour and a half. <laughs> uh, what did I want to do last time? We can't do this by ourselves. We'll crop it. We're... Can I talk for an hour and a half? Hmm. We'll find out. We can't do this by ourselves. We'll cooperate with other masters. <laughs> That's what I wanted to do last time. I believe I discussed it before the end of the episode. Essentially, it's the Ilya. Let's go find Berserker. Because, you know, options. Not really many. They aren't opponents that we can take on by ourselves. There are three enemies. And then we'll need at least one more on our side. Then there are limited possibilities. People who are mad giant have a reason to fight against Caster. It'll be other masters. I'll be slightly disappointed of Rin if she hasn't thought of this herself. いいわ。その心は口にするからには何か算段があるんでしょ。いや、そういうわけじゃないんだが、今のキャスターの状態は他のマスターにとっても無視できないだろう。なら、今回だけってことで手を組めるかもしれないと思って。ええ。実は私も
Servitude. Baka, Shiro ni tocha, aitsu ga ichiban yabai no yo. Why? Why? Aitsu, hajime kara Shiro shika mite nakatta mono. Watashi wa tomo kaku, anta wa donna me ni awasare ka wakatta mon janai wa yo. Well, she. I know she's got like a thing going on, uh, going on with Emiya here, but I don't remember ever having something where it's like, ah, oh, she's only looking at Emiya. What a even better reason to not, you know, do something unfortunate. Hmm. Okay. What happens? Hmm. What then? Uh, she's being possessive. Then, Tazaka versus Kaze and Gulf's down her team. Yeah, she's being possessive. Yeah,どう?今はイリアスフィールにかけるしかないわね。キャスターの正体がアーチャーの言う通りなら。間違いなくバーサーカーは天敵だし何しろ生前の知り合いだものキャスターの手口なんて知り尽くしてるでしょバーサーカーならキャスターとアーチャーが同時に攻めてきても追い返せるそりゃ理想論だけどトウサカキャ
希望的観測にも程がある。I bet he would scorn me, saying that it's a convenient fantasy. But what's wrong with believing? Is it wrong to have hope for someone you haven't met yet? I realize that I'm gritting my teeth. The man who told me to drown my ideals and die betrayed Tazaka in front of me. The guy with that much trust and power switches the legion so easily. My mind darkens. No, it's freezing. My head cools down thinking about what he did. I'm angry. I can't forgive him for betraying Tazaka. And I can't forgive the fact that he cast away his partner. I will swear here. Even if that may have been the very best action, and even if it turns out that it was the right choice to survive, I would never do something like that. His actions have been getting on my nerves. He told me not to talk about ideals. I opposed him when he told me I cannot save everybody. But I agreed with his words somewhere else inside of me. His words are correct. The superhero my father talked about is just a fantasy. And I accept the fact that I would have to become like him to get as close as possible to the ideal as possible. Not wanting to do so, I openly denied the idea, even though I accepted it in my mind. But this isn't on such a level. I cannot approve of him. I cannot approve of his action no matter what the circumstances may be. I won't be able to keep standing if I approve of him. My words do not disperse into the darkness, but stay into the room. But stay in the room. A few hours until dawn. I keep repeating those words even in my sleep. Hmm. Oh, we're getting close to Valentine's Day. Verse Berserker. Good job, guys. Negotiation sounds like they're gonna go well. Interlude. Right. I was thinking that this it was about time for Saber to get, uh, you know, for the deadline that Caster set, essentially, for her to come willingly to her servitude. She's alone with her thoughts in the darkness. It has been a day since she attacked the church and killed the priest. It has been a day since she declared that she can find it, no matter where it may be hidden, if it exists. It may not be the case for the other servants, but there is no way someone versed in magic like her would not be able to find a relic as holy as the Holy Grail. Then, there is only one answer. The Holy Grail was never hidden in this church to begin with. She sighs and puts, a uh, puts fingers on her temple. She closes her eyes, heavy darkness assails her body. No, it is just a scream. It's not coming from outside. The scream comes from her body and mind, telling her that her fatigue is at the limit. It has been a month since she was summoned. Since then, she has done her best to win. Her master is an ordinary person without a magic circuit, and she is the weakest of the servants. To make up for that, she abused forbidden magic. Collection from people, the magical strings she placed throughout the town and the control of the ley line used in sacrifices. These are all reasons why she was called a witch during her life. She's never used them before. She should never have used them, and she did not intend to be uh, to do the forbidden. So, why did she end up using them for this meeting in this conflict? Really? Interesting. It has something to do with her master. She seems very easily frazzled by him. Hmm. She became a heroic spirit to take revenge. But she also knows it is meaningless to use the skills that labeled her as a witch. She only uses trivial magic. She only created disasters that caused people to destroy them, uh, themselves with their own greed. That was all the revenge she could manage. So what caused her to stray from her path so much? That sounds more like a rationalization than the real reason. And that is a lie. Yep. She knows the true identity of the Holy Grail. She already knows what that thing is and why servants like her are summoned. It is true that most wishes can be granted using the Holy Grail that appears in this town. It will allow her to stay in this world 
with a physical form, and it will allow her to start a second life as a human. But... It sounds like you have zero motherfucking vation. Saying so, she closes her eyes. And she empties her mind. For now, she lets her guard down and rests her mind. She hears sounds of rain. It was night. It was a night without moonlight. The surroundings were pitch black. And she wandered with an empty mind. That is where she met him. With a blood-stained body and frozen limbs. A chance meeting that was more miraculous than any miracle. Flashback in the interlude? It was the mountain where Ryoto Temple is located. Falling rain. She was stumbling aimlessly through the dense forest. <laughs> huh? Oh, what was her identity again? Oh... No, that's not the one I wanted. Right. Oh. Okay. Didn't we get some sort of information on her true identity? Like, even if it's just like a title? I could have sworn that was mentioned. Hmm. Like Archer had figured it out or some shit? Sounds really familiar. At some point. What I wanted to check was... Is she from the area? That's really weird, if so. She left behind a trail of blood. In her hand was a dagger that breaks all contracts. Her purple robe was wet with rain and her limbs had turned white. Uh, from the winter cold. Oh, right. The dagger breaking contracts. I mentioned before that I had I was under the impression that it was reversing stuff. I think I just got the false impression from how she basically took Saber's, like, forced Saber into a contract. That she was basically reversing the contract to her. That sort of thing. Like, broke the contract, reformed it for her, and, like, the dagger did all that, basically. That's what I had remembered at the time, and... Admittedly, it had been a while since I actually recorded that part, so I assume I just forgot things and remembered it, uh, remember things incorrectly and made assumptions based on the holes that were in my memory then. <laughs> she staggered around, holding onto the trees for support. She walked on, dirty with mud and her breath ragged, reaching out her hand as if begging for help. She did not look like her usual so. Filled with a cool composure. No, even the amount of magical energy was unlike her. She was exhausted. She only had a handful of power left. A handful? For a servant, magical energy is like a lifeline that allows them to stay in this world. Oh. So you'd been summoned for a while. Okay. Did you get summoned by someone else? They died and you, like... Showed up at Ryoto Temple? And, like somehow got magic from Kuzuki? Hmm. That was all lost. No magical energy was coming from her master. That was only natural. She had just killed her own master. Oh, okay. That was the cause of her exhaustion. She, a servant caster, was about to disappear alone as compensation for obtaining freedom.
me. <gasps> but she had made a mistake. Servants exist only using a supply of magical energy provided by their masters. But not just magical energy. Servants are only allowed to exist in this age by being connected with people of this age. In other words, to lose one's master, passport to this age, means being forced to return to the outside world. But she would not normally be this exhausted. This was the curse her master had left her. Her master did not approve of her, as she was a better magist than he was. Therefore, he limited her magical energy to always be below his level. Yeah. The magical energy of a, a level of a mere human cannot keep serving in this world. Unless it's coming continuously. She would normally not be uh, she would normally be able to stay in this world for two days after losing her master. But now it was different. Her magical energy was drastically decreasing with every second, and the end was near. Probably a few more minutes. She would disappear if she could not find her next master in that time. She would disappear before she could find, unable to do anything. She would be a pitiful servant, some only to be trampled upon. <sighs> It was vexing. It was vexing, but it wasn't anything out of the ordinary. It had always been like this for her. She was treated unreasonably like this all the time. Are we gonna go to another flashback? Oh, this feels like it. She was always used as a tool, and she was never understood by anyone. Yes. Her life was always controlled by someone. Her mind was destroyed at a young age. Save a hero chosen by the gods. Ooh. That doesn't sound enviable. Just for the sake of a hero. The goddess of beauty happened to favor. And the goddess cursed her to blindly love a man she had never seen. Ugh. The girl betrayed her father. And she was even forced to betray her own country. There's no memory after that. After everything was over, the girl who was a princess was an unfamiliar country. A girl that betrayed her father, the king for a man. A witch that cut apart her own brother and threw the pieces into the sea to escape her native country. And the man who wanted it done cast her aside in order to become king, saying he could not marry a witch. She was controlled and taken to an unknown country, was marked as a witch and the only person she could rely on through her way. That is her origin. There's nothing people can blame her for, and people around her were aware of that. But still, people continue to demand for her to be a witch. Yeah, they don't like you being a witch, but you gotta be a witch! An evil to protect the king. An evil to be on the receiving end of evil superstitions. People want a convenient scapegoat that they could blame for any disaster. This pattern had never changed. People demand easily understandable evil to reassure themselves of their own goodness. In that regard, she is the perfect sacrifice. The father she could rely on was in a distant country. Nobody defended her. People gladly blamed her for all the ugly things in their world. They decided that every ugliness was the witch's doing. That they are poor. That they hate others. That humans are ugly. And even that people die. <laughs> so, she merely accepted him. Since she could only live as a witch, she decided to live as a witch. She swore to show them the ugliness of the wishes they demanded on her. If people do not know their ugliness, so be it. They can stay ignorant, go to hell for their own crimes, and suffer forever. They won't be able to get out of hell. They will suffer forever as criminals because they do not know what crimes they have committed. That is the reason for existence she imposed on herself. That is the only role people gave to the girl. To the one called the witch, who never had a free will. <laughs> but nobody actually wished for such a thing. Hmm. Is is that why she's so like like uncomfortable around Kuzuki? Cause he's like, yeah, 
You do your thing. I don't really care. You know, it makes sense. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you do your thing. Just make sure you do it well. Do do what you want, but make sure you do it, like, properly. And that's, like, his whole thing. And she's like, but why are you not demanding this of me? Ah. Uh. Mutz, nobody actually wished for such a thing. The same goes for her as well. She seeks revenge against her will without having any wish for herself. Against her will? Yes. Until she met up with a stranger. A rustling sound. She peered ahead, even though she was barely able to stand. It's midnight. Who could possibly come into this forest at this time? It's a heavy voice. She did not have the composure to check who it was. She just thought it was all over. She had no power to use magic. Her purple robe might have looked like a coat's, but she was covered in blood. A woman covered in blood was hiding in the rain. It is obvious what such a person did. Anyone would run away first. What they do after that? They would either call the police or pretend they hadn't seen it. You would run away? I suppose that depends. If she looks like if she looks like she's suffering, I think if you saw that, you would assume that it's like someone who's hurt and it's their blood. Unless you're able to identify like blood patterns and like, oh, that couldn't have come from you. Like really quickly. It did not matter to her, as she could no longer move. That caused the last of her spirit to give out. Her last moment was cold and lonely. Just as it was at the end of her true lifetime. Or so she thought. Ha! Ah, this music! Uh, like, this is... <laughs> it, it's funny, because this is like the music when... Ah, uh, Saber showed up, right? Or like the very beginning, too. When she regained consciousness, she was in that place. In front of her is that man. The man who she met in the woods. Those were his first words. Would you watch the man with blank amazement? The tone of his voice never changed. That was her first encounter with her master. Kuziki so, uh, so he true. Kuziki was a strange man. Should he be called a ghost? He had no reason to live, but he had no reason to die. He was just there. And since he existed, he found whatever whim took him. He has no self. That was her first impression of him. And she thought it would be easy to turn him into a puppet. She grew to realize that the thought was a mistake. Kuzuki Sorichiro does not have a past. He has no self because he has no past. It does not mean Kuzuki Sorichiro is empty. Kuzuki was a sincere man. He easily accepted her when she told him that she wanted him to be her master, and when she told him about her true identity. He accepted it after she told him it was the truth. She obtained the new master, was able to stay in this world, and returned to the role of being a witch. Still, she considers it to be a miracle. She would have disappeared before she woke up if she wasn't taken to the Ryota Temple. The Ryota Temple is a demonic place for servants, but it is a perfect summoning place once inside. As the Ryota Temple is surrounded by a boundary field, it is suited for keeping anything inhuman. She is able to remain without disappearing because she was brought to the Ryota Temple. Had it been any place else, she would have vanished after being taken there. As a result, she obtained the best ley line and the best protection. She easily occupied the Ryota Temple, figured out the me uh, mechanisms of the Holy Grail, and summoned Assassin as the fifth servant. But such things are trivial matters. She was certainly lucky on that night. Many miracles saved her, and she is now on the verge of victory. But they do not deserve things. She would have been fine with it, even if those miracles had not occurred, like, you know, the slight change at the beginning of the game. For Emiya. Doesn't have Archer taken down? There is only one important fact. A very small matter, but it's trivial for anyone else. For her, 
the fact that she was able to meet Kuzuki Tsurichiro is a miracle beyond belief. But it's not going well. Now she feels that everything she does is not going well. The master will not be delighted with what she did. He has never had an interest in the Holy Grail. She would do her best to grant any wish of his, but Kuzuki Surichiro was, uh, has none. One-sided relationship. Oh, are you... Is that why? They did not get along well. It is not going well at all. <laughs> she turns to the intruder. It is not her master that is standing there. It's the knight in red archer, with its true identity still unknown. Archer. You <laughs>私たちの敵はバーサーカーだけよ。それも聖馬さえ陥落すれば、こちらから撃って出るだけ。あなたもそれが分かっていたからこそ。さて、どうかな。私はあのマスターと契約を聞いたかっただけとは思わないか。あの
Uh, her mission is to win the war. No, to be honest, that is not the end she wishes for. The knight in red goes up the stairs. Seeing him off silently, Caster lets out a long sigh. One more day until Saber surrenders. Oh, I thought it was like today, I thought. She does not have the Holy Grail yet, but she will approach the end once Saber falls. What will happen when the war ends? Caster will make every wish come true. With her powers, every wish. It's not bad to live as a witch, like she swore before dying. But the reason will go away once the war ends. Even if she still has the will, her master will lose the reason to stay as her master. Caster gracefully reaches out into empty space. Her hard work is about to be rewarded, but her expression is like that of a criminal about to be executed. Hmm. Oh, right, with this. This is a fun thing to go through. Okay, I'm gonna. I'll be right back. As you might notice, my throat is definitely more. And my <laughs> nose is plugged up more than normal, and I don't. It's hard to get out of this state. Physically, so. Yeah, give me a second, I want to take a break. And back, just in time to see many corpses. Now, I died at the time and uh, was reborn. I do not have any regrets. My eyes lost hatred there. My hands lost anger there. Is this Amia? This feels like Amia's thing, right? It's like fire of the world. As everything's you didn't lose any you didn't lose hatred there. There are many things you seem to hate. My legs lost hope there. And then again, temporarily maybe. Myself lost itself there. Everything went away. It's not because I gave up that I believed nothing would save me. I just found out that it's natural. It's just that dying people will die and survivors will survive. I laid down at the rubble and stared at the burning field. I understood everything then. I thought I understood everything. But I still considered it. How wonderful it would be. I was able to save everything here. That, that is what I admired. I just wish nobody would have to suffer. That's why I tried to become a superhero. It was simple, and it seemed like an ideal existence. That's why I am for it. I knew where I had to be. But there were many ways to get there. I kept on running, wanting to get as close as possible, even though I did not know what was right or wrong. Many paths I took were crooked. And my destination was only getting farther, farther away. I'm taking the long way. I've been repeating this for ten years since I got saved by Kuritsuku. And I won't regret it. I'm not as skillful as Tasaka. I will take the wrong path and lose a lot of things at times. But I cannot discard them as meaningless. We get tiger dojos out of them. I have to present meanings for everything I've trampled upon. And everything that cannot be returned. So, I cannot lose... I cannot be helped if I lose against someone else. If I can win against myself, I can always fight back against my mind that tells me to give up. That's all I swore upon. There's only one thing that I believed in and wanted to believe in. That's right. Even if I'm walking down the wrong path, I will not regret believing in it. I wake up from the light shining in. I mean... It's... If I had to choose one thing... For who Archer is... 
if I, like all my speculation stuff, if I had to absolutely just choose one, it would be Amiya. I mean, primarily because of the fact that it's the simplest. And there is a little bit more of a runaround that you need to do to introduce an entirely new character and make that reveal, make that reveal meaningful and stuff like that. I think you could do that. I, I think that wouldn't be out of the realm of possibilities. But the betting man in me would say Emmy out of the choices that I had. I guess because Kritiku, while already established, has, has a lot more things going against him. The idea of a future, uh, future child uh, of Emmy at some point makes sense. I think between him and Emiya, they both have a similar amount of, like, like, narrative, like, uh, lore dumps. I was about to say bullshit, which is true in some ways. Not necessarily, it, being lore narrative bullshit isn't necessarily bad. FYI. It's, most things are narrative bullshit. That's just the nature of narratives. <laughs> but, they require the same amount of sort of, like, info dumps in order to try to connect the dots to make them make sense based on what we know. And between the foreshad the like very heavy-handed foreshadowing and such, we know that it's connected to Emiya. We know that there is a parallel in his mind to it, and it's like that dream. I can't lose to myself after falling asleep with the thought, I can't lose to him. There's also that aspect where you could make sense where it could be like, say, his kid, and it's like a representation of a different version of himself that may not be the same person, but has a lot of similarities to him, that sort of thing, where he's fighting against someone with the same ideal, just might not be the same. And that could all make sense, too, but if you wanted to go for the simplest betting man route, it would be Emiya. Mind you, I sort of hope it's like his kid or something, because that would open up a lot of interesting possibilities, basically. So... Eh. Eh. I mean, I'd probably be fine either way. At this point, it's the only real two possibilities that I could see as viable. So, it, in the end, it's just speculation for speculation's sake at this point. I can't really see anything else, and if it is something else, then I, I've i boxed myself into a corner rationally, so... Yeah. I wake up from the light shining in. It's before six o'clock. The sky I can see through the window is a clouded one. I get ready and leave my room. My body feels well and there isn't that much pain from my wound. I shouldn't be a burden to Saka even if we end up fighting. I take the glasses I'm currently wearing. Uh, I normally wear contacts, but I wear glasses when I'm like not out and about. Pretty common. I'm going to take the glasses that I'm currently wearing and index finger, rim in between the nose, push up, then put my chin up, and take my index finger again, put it on my lips, and I put them a little bit like, hmm, how are you looking there, rim? I'm ready, Vine. Tasaka has transformed. I have no idea what was fashionable for glasses back then. You don't have good eyesight. Damn. What's the point of having magic if you can't fix that? <laughs> uh, well then, I guess it's alright if you say so. What kind of magic is it? It looks so wrong yet... So, so right. I'm not really sure if I prefer her with glasses or not. Not her specifically, but in general. Yeah, it depends on the character. Whatever looks good on the character. In terms of design aesthetic. Yeah. Her, I think it looks better from certain angles. Other angles, eh, not so much. 
町からはるかに離れた市街まだ人の手が入っていない広大な樹海よ like that,、uh, more, like, confused look that she gave when she's like talking about the landmine thing it's just like sort of the angle of how they drew her face and the, where she has the glass is just like on her her nose that keeps them a little bit farther down I just thought it worked well like from a pure aesthetic point of view 長年人間の介入を拒んできただけあって森は深くて広いわ年に何人か何の準備もなしに踏み込んで遭難したって話知ってるでしょ Wait, what? I nod silently. It is rejected him. Is the forest alive? If there ends up being some like living forest aspect of this that we didn't encounter the other round, I'm gonna be so. Confused. Our fate will be sealed the instant our negotiations fail, and we end up fighting. We won't be able to call for help, and it'll be difficult to run away. We cannot escape from the forest unless we defeat that giant berserker. That ends the plan. She starts walking with a big bag in her hand. I follow her with the usual Shinai bag in mind. But to Saka, money for cap is fine, but does that mean we'll be walking back on the way home? I mean, we could get a cab on the way back, too. We rode the taxi for an hour from the town. We drove to the highway, past many mountains, and reached the entrance of the forest. Of course, the forest does not have any paved roads. We finally reached the entrance of the forest after walking about a kilometer from the highway. Also, if you have to drive an hour just to get to the forest, then this is a big enough city that. Why are you assuming it's in this forest? Ah.、Uh, I knew it wasn't going to be easy, but I get nervous once I actually face it. The forest is dark even though it's daytime. The tall branches block off sunlight. It's hard to see more than a few meters ahead, let alone to the end. ちょっとシロ悪いけど先に進んでみてくれないいいけどあの子の居場所を知ってるのは遠坂なんだろ俺が先に行っても仕方がないと思うわ。You mean I'm the bait? Whether for the forest or for her, one of the two. I can play as I enter the forest. Then? なんだビリッときたぞ Ooh, I'm the f i o l a Oh, that makes sense. I pull back my foot. I only feel a shock for an instant. It's not that strong, so it'd hurt more if I hit my foot on the corner of a dresser. Well, in short, it's like static electricity. Is it? We want to see her. We can just be like, hey, come the fuck over here. We can negotiate here, right? We don't, need, we don't even need to go to the villa, right? We're trying to visit. We're not coming in like aggression. Winnipeg. She waves her hand and steps into the forest. And then. Ah!、Uh, Sasaka jumps back with a funny scream. Oh my goodness, is her hair gonna be funny? I hear fire hissing. Okay, that sounds worse. I want to believe it's my imagination that leaves.、Uh, that the leaves under Sasaka's feet are scorched. I calmly analyze the situation. Oh, I was hoping she'd have like buffy hair. Oh, I wanted to see Rin with buffy hair. Oh.、Yeah, but it doesn't seem like Tazak is listening to me. Oh, no, I hear her laughing all the time. It's like in the back of my head. It's actually sort of scary that that's still happening. Tazaka yells into the empty sky. She's so angry that she might go to fight instead of talk. Yeah, that'll end well. Well, anyways, 
it seems talking bad about Dasaki is fatal no matter how far away you get, uh, you are from her, so I guess I'll refrain from doing so. <laughs> uh, uh, we walk into the forest. We're the only people in the vast place. I don't hear any beasts, and the grasses are dead like corpses. The endless rows of trees makes me think this forest goes on forever. This is the middle of February, so I suppose it wouldn't exactly be a very lively forest. It's been three hours since we entered, just as our surroundings start to blur together. I fell to Saka's stair. There's only darkness ahead. Between the trees, there's something unfitting of the surroundings. Visible through cracks so small, you'd miss if you weren't careful. Zaki complains and heads to the strange object we can see in the distance. I still can't tell what it is, so I follow her. It's a wall. A building. We get out of the forest. The endless forest quickly ends. Okay. What a thing. No, it seems like the forest is scooped out here with a big spoon. The sky curving above us is gray. A giant dome. It seems more like an underground kingdom than a clearing. What? The fuck does that mean? Okay. Is it like a... Well, whatever. This is El uh, Elia's dwelling. I don't think in my current state of... You know, like... Stiff nooses and throat stuff, I can really say. Elias feel. Uh, reliably. <laughs> An old castle built within the forest. A solitary castle without any visitors. Too big for one girl, not to mention too desolate for anyone to live in alone. Anyway, it does us no good to be just standing here. According to Saga, Elia knows we're here. Then we should go in from the front entrance as a sign that we're not here to fight. She's ready to fight. Oh, stop her, stop her, stop her. Socks looking for the castle with an alarmed expression. Her face is tense as if she's confronting an enemy. Elia? She does have those... I sort of get the impression that our... They were like... Failed attempts to create her? Like previous attempts? The like nurses or whatever. However they are dressed up. Maids? I forget. They did sort of refer to them as sisters and Elia called them failures, right? Yeah. So not do we have to? We don't. You know, come on. Let's just go in front ways. Saka starts running towards a big tree by the wall, and I don't have time to stop her. Uh, no, that's not all. She grabs into a branch and skillfully climbs up. I look up in astonishment. Saka looks around and. She jumps and kicks at the castle. A shattering sound. The window breaks and the red figure disappears into the castle. Hmm. That does beg the quest. No, not this, but before the boundary feel thing. Weren't Rin. Wasn't Rin unaware in the last route that Elia knew they were there? Hmm. Maybe it wasn't that. Maybe Elia was supposed to go off to deal with them. Oh, I don't remember. But that was like three hours. Oh, whatever. Whatever. Yeah, think. Yeah, that was debatable for a while now. What's done is done. I climb up the tree and jump into the second floor window like Tasaka. We enter the hallway. Even before I'm dazzled by the magnificence of the castle, I sense the abnormality Tsaka is talking about. I hear the sounds of fighting. Swords crashing against each other. 
Wait. Why? But would such a storm-like battle even be possible? Even the most fierce battle of swords, the battle between Berserk and Saber does not create such sounds. You think it's Assassin coming here to try to take out Berserker? Hmm. This isn't the sound of short, uh, swords crashing. This is one against many. There's literally a war going on somewhere in this castle. One side has to be Elias Real. This is Elias Real's castle. I'm saying Elias Real now. Uh, if there is a battle here, it could only be uh, Berserker attacking the intruding enemy. I run. Sounds coming from below us. Considering the location we came in from, the battle's happening right in the center of the castle, in the guest hall. I run through the unfamiliar castle. This isn't the time to be talking. I don't know what's going on, but something terrible's happening. I can't imagine anyone but, uh, Assassin being the one he's fighting. Unless Lancer is here. That'd be weird, though. I run down the stairs. The fierce battle's happening nearby. <laughs> Saki confirms what's down the hallway. The hallway splits at the T-junction, both branches leading to a terrace at either side of the hall. It's better to split up. As we are now, we have no way to escape once we're found. There's no point in staying together right now. We don't stand a chance either way. If we're separated, there's uh, there's hope for the... If we're separated, there's hope for the other one to escape, even if one of us is found. Saka walks down the hallway, facing east. I nod and go the, uh, to the other hallway, the one heading west. Shiro. She suddenly calls to me. Okay. Well, you're not wrong. Uh, Emia doesn't seem like the type to really do that. <laughs> she suppresses her emotions, and I know exactly why she's telling Emia that. Sounds more like a wish than a warning. I go around and come out into the terrace. I see Tasaka merge on the opposite side. Hmm. I suppose if the timeline for getting Saber under their control went faster than I was expecting, it could be one of the others. She immediately takes cover, then peeks out. As soon as I follow her example and look down, we both gasp. Shinji! Why did this place? I forgot about Shinji! And what's... Yeah. Is Archer really... Okay. Gilgamesh is fighting Berserker. Okay. Shinji stands top the rubble in the corner of the room, happily watching the scene. No. That's not the surprising thing. What I have to accept right now is that the battle... Uh, is the battle Shinji is observing. The Black Giant lets out a roar. The swinging ass sword blows up dust and grinds the rubble into powder. I gotta be honest, hearing this music again, I sort of miss Berserker being in this. He is so intimidating, it makes, makes us all feel so much more epic. But the Mad Warrior appears no different from before. No, his dreadful roar is louder now. The girl white is behind the giant and looks concerned. Berserker's master, Elias Veal. The ever-smiling girl, unsuited for murder. But the girl is now shivering and watching her servant with a face almost in tears. Her face is desperately trying to deny the despair in front of her. Someone help me. The girl's trembling lips mouth these words. A storming whirlwind. Zucker's axe sword is repelled each time. By the noble phantasm of one servant. The one reigning from the throne of rubble in the center of the hall. Many swords are released. Each one of the weapons appearing from behind the man would cause certain death. And 
they attack. They are like gushing water. The infinite noble phantasms not only propel Berserker's Axorn, the fiercest body. Pieces are blown from his body. Swords cut through his body, penetrates his skull, and pierces his heart. But he still does not die. The giant regenerates every time he's killed, slowly but surely moving forward. Eight times already. He's been killed so many times, but Berserker still moves forward. We wouldn't know that it's eight, whatever. The enemy greets him with a smile. The tragedy continues. Berserker's killed without even being able to go near the enemy. Fuck. It's not because Berserker is getting killed without being able to do anything. That man, that servant is beyond belief. The infinite noble phantasms he sends out are each a true noble phantasm. I can. I can tell, since I projected Archer's swords. They are the originals of every noble phantasm. The first ones, from before they became a legend. Okay, so we're just gonna. We're gonna get exactly what's going on with that without having to really think about it. Okay, sure, whatever. Uh, who could it be having an infinite supply of such weapons? No, first of all, there should only be seven servants. Then he's the eighth one, so that shouldn't exist. Hmm. Uh, sorry, I got pulled away for there for a second. I can't breathe. Circuit defies description. His body of steel and his superhuman strength, and his regenerative powers on top of that, he's not someone you can match. But the Eighth Servant does not retreat from such an opponent, and overwhelms Berserker using the demonic swords and the holy swords he releases. When I look up, I can see that Sasaki is pale as well. It is only natural. The place below us is a land of death. We'll die instantly if we enter it. No more than that. He is a demon. That man wishes for battles only to kill others. But with such an enemy in front of him, the black giant is still the strongest. He does not stop even if he is pierced or slashed all over his body. He receives the reign of noble phantasms, generates each time and closes in on his enemy. It is an advanced devoid of tactics. He's not thinking about countering the enemy's attacks. It is a savage fight where he advances on his enemy as long as he still lives. He will not reach the enemy. Berserker's brute courage will prove futile. He will end his life as a mere target. The enemy understands that. That's why he's standing there and provoking the foolishly advancing giant. The black giant does not have a way to win. It's something that the enemy and even I understand. And probably. The berserker himself knows that. The giant keeps walking forward. He knows no retreat and does not avoid the attacks. The man greets the figure with a smile. The noble phantasms emerge from space. Letting out a laugh, he readies the noble phantasms behind him. At signal, the numerous noble phantasms descend on the giant. The giant repels most of them, and at the same time loses most of his life. The black giant shakes. The body of rock starts to fall. But... The giant stands his ground and shakes the noble phantasms from his body. The exclamation of surprise comes from the strange servant. The black giant destroys the swarm of noble phantasms and moves towards his enemy. His body's dying already. With a hopeless fatal wound, the black giant still advances. 
It is the result of a strong will. It's not madness resulting from being a berserker. The giant faces this hopeless fight with an iron will. The magical boots are fired mercilessly. Repelling it with his axe sword, the giant corners the man with his body slashed and with his limbs pierced. He will not reach the man. But he still challenges the man because there is something he cannot give up. And what is he moving forward for? Serpents fight for their master to protect their master's life. That is why the giant does not retreat. He cannot. He can only move forward as a shield to protect the frightened master behind him. The giant continues his foolish advancement. It's because he knows that he needs to take all the attacks in order to beat that servant without having his master killed. And when he reaches the enemy, that is when he wins. From the beginning, that has been this battle's nature. The man has to kill the giant before he reaches him. Or take a few steps back. The giant has to approach the man before his life ends. It is the battle where the ones to accomplish their goal first is the one to win. The giant is aware of that, even if. It is a battle with no hope of victory from the start. He roars. Coming out of his tenth death, his body explodes foreign. He charges into the man like a bull challenging a matador. Get old! Numerous arrows are released. Was it his last charge, or did he just get used to the attacks? The giant repels all the arrows. He approaches the owner of the noble phantasms. He swings his axe sword. A weapon that is not yet raised against the man rips through the air. And the black bull is captured by numerous appearing chains. That's new. What kind of noble phantasm is it? Oh, look at all those swords sticking in him too. The chain that appeared out of nowhere confines Berserker as if fighting space itself. This feels like this would have been really useful for you, for you like in the other route, uh, Gilgamesh. The chain twists Berserker's arms and bends them in a the direction they should not go. The chain tightens mercilessly, trying to tear off the rock like hen. <laughs> The man's voice. Oh, it's filled with creaking sounds of the chain. It must have been Berserker's power. The giant tries to break the chain that binds even space itself. Even if it sounds impossible, I'm sure that giant will be able to manage it. And the man acknowledges that as well. The girl screams. Elise Veal commands Berserker to retreat using her command spell. The giant is still bound by the chains, unable to move an inch. なんで私の中に帰れって言ったのにどうして無駄だ人形この鎖に繋がれたものはたとえ神であろうと逃れることはできんいいな神聖が高ければ高いほど餌食となる元より神を律するためだけに作られたもの I suppose that's not a bad reason why it didn't work previously, or it wasn't used in the last round. And so, the man points to the giant as if to note the end. An astonished girl's voice. It's over. It really ends. On my chains. He receives 22 noble phantasms on his defenseless body. The black giant falls silent after becoming a grotesque object. I don't even need to check if he's alive or not. Even if he is a great hero that overcame 10 deaths, he should not be able to get up after receiving 20. Yes. Even if he is alive, he should not even have the power to pray. And the battle ends. It was known from the start who's going to win. Zerka cannot beat that servant. No, servants cannot beat that man, as long as they are heroic spirits. 
All rogue spirits have things they were weak against when they were alive. Those are their greatest weak points. Then, then, what if there's a hero who possesses all the noble phantasms, even the ones that killed each hero? This is the result. Even if he may have been stronger, he could not beat that man. The girl in white runs to the giant corpse. Sing it. The man mercilessly slashes the girl with a sword in his hand. Oh, this isn't good. I scream. The man slashes her eyes in one blow. Ugh. And he pierces her heart. But it misses. No, he made it miss. The girl's pierced in her lung and coughs up blood. The chains are broken. Shattering his binds, the black giant charges at the man. The man pierces the slow moving target. A lance pierces the heart. He impales the giant with a lance, very similar to Gabe Bolg. And that's it. The black giant dies for sure this time. The sword is pulled out from the girl. Leaving traces of red, the girl crawls to the unmoving giant. Watching it in delight, the man walks forward. He throws down his sword. He will use his bare hands to finish off the dying girl. Oh, fuck. <sighs> I'll die. I'll probably die. I'll surely die this time. There's no logic behind that servant. He will kill anyone that hinders him. I will surely be killed if I, if I don't get away from here before he finds me. And I... Don't save myself before I save the others. Frozen body bursts. My feet lift me up and my arms grab the railing at the same time. I see Tasaka as I do so. She's biting her lips in anger while watching the tragedy below us. I know. Tasaka wants to stop him as well. But we'll be the ones to be killed if we do so. She can't stop him. That goes the same for me as well. I know it's stupid for me to die trying to save a dying girl. I don't care about that. I just can't leave her be. That's all that fills my mind. I jump down over the railing. Zaki and Shinji both look in surprise at the intruder, but the man does not even look at me. The man reaches for the girl's body. Yamato! I yell. I stop him with all my might. Oh. The man stops his arm. And he slowly turns to me like death. They found its new prey. Interlude. Oh, that means it's the right choice. Going back over a month. I don't really know what I do in those situations, but it's very hard to imagine Emiya with his mind ever doing anything but jumping out and trying to save people at the worst, at you know, the most self detrimental possible moment. Yeah. Going back over a month, he was summoned since world before anyone. He's not summoned in this country. Oh man, we're getting all the backstories today, aren't we? A far away foreign land. The land is always covered in white, the sky is always gray, and the castle is built within, uh, within a hidden mountain. It's always winter in the, uh, that land. I don't remember if they actually ever said where they were from. Coldness and stagnation, barrenness and longing. As they cut all ties with the present world and await the reproduction of the miracle, they are like living corpses. The cold winter air steals the human warmth. The stagnant world does not allow them a new lifestyle. The family is the seeker of the Holy Grail. Spring does not come for the Ironsburn family, so their wish is fulfilled. It has been ten centuries since they started the search for the Holy Grail. As they use every possible method to attain the gro uh, their goal, they are eventually able to forge the Holy Grail. 
even then. All they can do is build the vessel. The divine mystery that should dwell in there is empty. And they keep building vessels that will never be filled. But a foreseeable end comes to them. They perform a ritual to fill the vessel with help from outsiders. There's also both a success and a failure. And the Holy Grail's made. The Holy Grail should be filled with that method. But they make many enemies at the same time. Even though they should be the owners of the Holy Grail, they have been degraded down to the common magi that donate help. Their tenacity is abnormal. No, they have been obsessed since that time a thousand years ago. They almost obtained the Holy Grail. They broke the rules and constantly pulled out the strongest card. In the first one, they did not have time to do such a thing. In the second one, they finally found a loophole in the rules. In the third one, they summoned what they shouldn't have. In the fourth one... They were sure of their victory, having the strongest card and its master. The result was a total failure. Serving the master, they selected to betray them. The man destroyed the Holy Grail, leaving behind his wife and daughter in the Winter Castle. Great to go? That sounds right. I thought it was later than the fourth, though. Hmm. They were infuriated with the man's betrayal, and they lamented their mistake. I don't remember if he's, like, married to her or whatever. I never got that. I don't remember that. I could be wrong. Obviously. But, you know, being connected to the Icebirds and, you know, having the strongest card, a.k.a. Saber, and having Kritsuku and hiring him, etc, etc, etc. Outsiders cannot be trusted. Okay. Their family with their perfected magic circuits will be the only ones to obtain the Holy Grail. They had insurance to begin with. And on the fifth one, they finally prepared the strongest master and servant. It was him. Two months before the Holy Grail war began, Every rule is broken for him, Berserker, to be summoned. Okay, then it was the last one. Is this really the... F I thought this was more, like, later than the fifth one. Huh. Oh, whatever. The days that followed were only to hurt the master. The commands bound engraved all of the girls... Uh, the girl was used to control Berserker. It did no good as a magic circuit, and only drained her life away. Even the slightest move on Berserker's part caused the girl to scream in pain. It was only natural. The Holy Grail would appear in two months. The only thing keeping him in this world were the girl's magical energy and her command spell. Berserker was not created from the magical energy of the Holy Grail. Even if the girl may have been special, to keep Berserker in this world using her own magical energy was like having her life taken away. Knowing that, they still did not allow for her to rest. They abandoned them in the winter forest, filled with hungry beasts. They gave them over to possessed corpses. They threw them in a waste yard full of failures. The only way for the girl to survive was to rely on the giant she had been given. She, she survived the training that was more like torture. She would let the giant attack the oncoming enemies. She let out screams of anguish. She allowed him to attack every one of her enemies. He does not know himself. And the process became a special one for him. Mm. In contrast to her young appearance, she hated whining. Mm. Explains why she hated Emia. <laughs> at times. At times when Emia, you know... <laughs> everything that came out of her mouth was an insult. She must have instinctively known that if she was going to murmur something... She would get stronger when she would insult and hate someone. The girl scorned Berserker for being ugly and cursed his existence. It was only natural. The girl would not have had to suffer if he had not existed. She would not have been thrown into hell if she had not been chosen as a master. The girl insulted the giant every chance she got and used him to take out her anger. The pain had lessened by the time she mastered Berserker's control. Just when the Holy Grail showed signs of its appearance. The girl took away the giant's sanity as if in revenge. 
treating him as a mad warrior. But he already knew that this was the girl's desperate. But he already knew that this was the girl's desperate opposition. The girl did so to hide her weakness. She walked with pride, as if saying that she could live alone, and that she did not need any friends or collaborators. It was a bluff to ignore the fact that she was fated to have nothing. Mm. Oh my. Bloody Tundra. In the winter forest, the girl timidly touched the arm covered in blood. Surrounded by hungry beasts, the girl was prepared for her death, but desperately denied it. At that time, he was not able to move without an order from her, uh, his master, and he was the first to be attacked by the beast. The beast bit off pieces of his neck, head, and limbs. With the scene in front of her, the girl screamed. As he had had his sanity taken away, he could not recall what she said back then. The girl yelled not for her sake, but for his. Even though her body was destroyed, whenever he swung his arm, she endured it for his sake. That's why they were both covered in blood. The giant was covered in the beast's blood, and the girl was covered in her own blood. He remembers the winter forest. The weight of the girl that rested on him, crying tears of anguish. And he realized, in that small, cold castle, he was the only one she talked to. The figure appears in his vision. It's just like that time. Tears he did not see on her since she became a complete master. The girl is running to him in tears. And the man slashes her. The golden foe gashes her eyes with a single slash, taking away her life forever. Her face is covered in red. She still runs in spite of that, but falls over a piece of rubble as her eyes are cut. The slender body falls over. There. The enemy sword is brought down. The sword misses her heart. The girl is coughing up blood as her lung has been pierced. It's not instant death. But it is fatal. With her eyes slashed, her lungs pierced. And her servant eliminated. She has nothing now. So, she didn't... So, she should at least die peacefully. It might be a salvation if she would just go to sleep right there. But... The girl crawls, leaving traces of blood, crying in pain. She crawls towards the black giant. How much power was left in him? Breaking the chains with all his might, he charges at the man. <laughs> A demonic lance is thrust. The heart-piercing lance impales the giant. That ends it. The man pulls out the lance, as if nothing has happened, and the remaining power in the giant completely disappears. His body disappears. All the power that was giving his body form has disappeared. So all that is left is for him to disappear. As he ran out of magical energy, there's no way for him to stay in this world. He falls. But in his last living moment, he sees the girl fumbling around for him. Power returns his falling body. The law of magic that constructed him. The regulation of the world that hates inconsistencies. The body that is crumbling away like sand. He pushes aside all powers trying to eliminate him, using his own power of will. He cannot disappear yet. 
He's probably the only one she relied on. He has to answer the solitary girl that believed in him although she insulted him. Their eyes slashed. The girl crawls, their hands stretched out. She must want to feel him, but she cannot see now. The bloodstained hands grope through empty space, trying to verify his presence. There's no power left in him. There's nothing he can do. The Zerker will fall here and die here. His body has died, and there's no power left to support him. But that cannot be allowed. His mind is dead. Supporting his body with his will that should no longer exist. He parts from this world. His body's still standing. Just as it was when he was invincible. As if to say, his body has to be invisible until the very last second for the girl that depended on him. And the girl reaches him. The hand that was grasping through empty space finally touches something. <sighs> Coughing up blood, the girl crawls to the hard figure. She cannot see, but she can still feel him. Berserker hasn't lost yet. She cannot see anymore. But Berserker's still strong like always. <laughs> Strength fades from her body. She's hurt and scared, but... It's alright as long as he's here. He always protected her. He was scary, but he really was kind. His big body was like that of a dad, and she wanted for him to pick her up once. She rests her body on him. It feels as though he'll rest one of his big, solid hands on her head. It's probably true. She'll be patting her head when she opens her eyes. Her body is cold. Calling the force from that time, the girl smiles. It happened so long ago. Calling the giant that protected her even when injured. The girl peacefully falls asleep. Are we really killing Ilya here? Uh, well, she is the Holy Grail, so it's going to be very difficult for anyone to actually, you know, uh, do anything Holy Grail-wise without her being alive, so... That's where I'm going to end it for today. <sighs> it's really hard to not think of Ely as a child and like a master going through this whole thing. <sighs> Once you think of her like that, what happens sucks even more. Fuck. Well, I don't know if that stuff's like, oh, the lungs. It's fatal. That's probably the bigger part. I don't know if like your eyesight and stuff can be brought back with magic healing. I have no idea what extent the magic healing has. They can keep her alive though, because of the Holy Grail stuff. Yeah. The fact that uh. Gilgamesh here probably means he knows the reason he's here. It's probably because he's well aware and they want to take care of this before Caster gets her, right? So. Fuck. Okay. Well, again, I'm going to uh, end it there, so. Yay! 
I'll see you all next time. Drive safely, everyone. <laughs>